we will be going over the footing observations and lean implementations for job 4420, the Lauren in Austin, Texas. Here you see an overview of the footings in this project. Um, we also were able to categorize three different type of footings that you will be able to see in the following. So we first start off with regular size footings that consisted of more than 500 rebar. And this data that right here you see on your right, no horror employee aided on the installation of the rebar. Also, the time consists of the total rework that was done for that footing. And the format that we have done is uh, hours, minutes, and seconds. So here for these seven footings with no help, you see that the average is seven hours, 17 minutes, and 35 seconds. So then we move on to bigger footings that consisted of a thousand plus rebar um, in that footing. We see an F18 on the left side and an F21 on the right side on, on this highlighted in red. The yellow highlight is for the F18, and this is where we installed our mobile lean implementation for that footing that consisted of having a drawing and um, specs, and we will be going over this in the future uh, slides. But here in the F21, there was no aid, and we can see that there was a difference of 52 minutes and 56 seconds between those two footings. So now we move on to the shear wall. They also consisted of a thousand plus rebar pure footing and in here shear wall 1 and shear wall 5 um, highlighted in green we can see that um, they also had elevators with them so we can see that the average the average times took more for these two compared to the other three shear walls but we still got an average of 18 hours 40 minutes and 12 seconds uh, for the shear walls so what was done was a kaizen implementation um, which is the philosophy of continuous improvement of working practices, um, personal efficiencies, etc. So what was first done when looking at this and how to implement improvement into the job site, we did a gimbal walk um, with Joel Chimon, Pete Chimon, Jeff Light, and myself, Luis Sanchez, um, on how to do this. And even Max, um, one of the laborers right there, he was able to help on give feedback on what we were able to look at it from an above location and see what was going on with the footing, such as where the rebar was placed, where the footings were going to be installed um, and observe. So, you know, we brainstormed between each other. I also spoke to trades, the super trades, and see on what their thoughts were and, you know, and what would help them out and what they thought. So what the solution that we came up with was to produce a mobile station that would hold the footing drawings and the specific rebar, such as showing the model for that rebar and showing their lengths for that footing. Um, and I was also there to answer questions and help with the installation as I was the lead guy on this Kaizen implementation. So we did this for the average uh, regular size footings here on the right side. Um, and we can see that this took an average of three hours, 46 minutes and 35 seconds. So here you're able to see that we were almost nearly uh, able to reduce it by half um, with just implementing this lean implementation. Um, so there is a three hours and 31 minutes in difference. We were able to reduce travel times and rebar misinterpretations and also rework. So observations that were taken at first and within that gamble walk, you know, and future moving on, we were able to see, you know, one of the main things was superintendents. Um, they were unstable, changing every week. We would have a new super. Um, you know, the main bigger super, the senior super was not even on site for more than half a day. Um, and the supers that were there, they were not directing their workers on how to install the rebar and not, you know, aiding them in knowledge. So there was also false expectations that they will get the work done, but you know, they, they were not able to. Um, so they were always having to play catch up and, you know, sandbagging, um, for later on for the footings because they well, didn't have the times on how they would finish. So also a big thing was, you know, drawings from FAPCO, they were not accurate. Um, specific an example for a footing F8 and F7, um, there's a ramp on the structural drawings, but on the ones that FAPCO sent, you know, with that rebar, um, the footings are all at the same height all throughout. So those footings were just completely wrong um, as they were not how they were supposed to. So to keep on going to observations, we were able to look at the travel time. Uh, mentioned before so with the travel time, you know rebar was not organized right here on the right hand side um, highlighted in a red circle um, It was not really organized. They do have tags But once they started using the rebar 
it would mix in with the other rebar um, so the tags were useless as you didn't know where rebar was which so they were having to keep looking and looking until they thought they found the correct one um, there was also defects um, they were constructed improperly um, such as not being able to look at the drawings and you know not having any knowledge on them um, so when they moved on to future footings and whole employees would go and inspect the quality of them we would notice mistakes and so they had to stop what they were doing in the future footings and then come back and have to get that work done um, and fix the problem so also for the workers installing the rebar you know the the heat after 2 p.m gets insanely hot so the guys would get tired um, their drive would not be the same as in the morning um, so we're also they were not looking at the drawings um, when installing the rebar and as previously mentioned again you know they're not knowledgeable and did, they were not trying to gain that knowledge but we were able to do gain some positive notes um, from this um, as an incentive you know to start getting them on board and trying to help them out um, you know offer them Gatorades if they had a footing without five mistakes um, with more with less than five mistakes um, so once you know that they did complete that task and I was able to give them Gatorades they were very responsive to giving me feedback on the lean implementation and they were actually very happy with that um, because they did say that they were able to get help as their super was not helping them out um, so they kept viewing the mobile station um, and here on the picture you can see even this sheet that has all the specs for you know the model and the um, lengths of the rebar they even took it even closer with them um, they put it right in that footing and so they were even able to look at it, as you can see in the picture there's three guys four or five and they're around this so they all just have they don't have to travel even outside the footing to look at it and that's seconds that they're saving and overall it gets more and more time um, they also didn't have to ask many questions um, and they were also when they had the drawing right next to them right before they started they were able to take a step back and see how they were going to tackle the footing so this is footing f18 right here and in the back is f21 so these guys when i was able to observe and see them they were able to see okay i'm gonna do it this way as i know that the rebar is how the drawing shows the rebar you know and they were going to move from one direction to the other but in the f21 where they were no help they didn't even know how they were going to tackle it and they were going all over the place and making their jobs harder so for future jobs and kind of this one we I do recommend the domain process. You know, you it consists of the define, measure, analyze, improve, and control phases. Um, so you first start off with the define phase and basically what is the problem, the scope, um, timeline, if you're gonna move on to that. But here we see that the problem was, you know, having a lot of rebark in the footings and also taking a long time. So then we moved on to the measure phase, which is the data collection and getting the averages. From getting those averages, we moved on to the analyze phase. Um, where we get to interpret the data, uh, bring some solutions, and you know see uh, what was being done. So then in the improve phase, um, we implement the solutions on a small scale, such as you know doing it in how I did it in F18. We do have it in the F21. We don't. Um, so you're able to see you know what is helping, what is not, and what ways you can still improve, or if it's not just going to work at all. Um, from then, you move on to the control phase, which you control that that implementation that we have such as that mobile unit and we keep it and keep working on it to make sure that it's stable and then from there when the super that's now been for quite a while I mentioned it to him and he's like hey man do this and you're gonna be able to you know have it an easier time and help out these guys and so you pass it on you teach them on what was being done and they follow through with it um, so I hope this helps out as this is also a benchmark and gathering data uh, for footings if this ever comes and hopefully this is useful um, for the future. Thank you so much.